Hello viewers, welcome to this short online lesson. Uh, what I'd like to do today is show you a simple in theory drum fill involving your hands and your bass drum foot. This can be applied to a double pedal, but let's keep it on a single pedal just because it incorporates everybody, not just those privileged elitists with their double pedals, like me. So let's look at how this uh, fill sounds first and then we can look at how to play it. The fill, at sort of a medium tempo, will sound something like this. And if you speed it up a little bit, it will sound something like this. Something along those lines. And the squeaky chair is a very important effect that must go with the fill. Now, how do we play that fill? So, if you're right-handed, you're going to play Two single strokes, right, left. If you're the other white meat and left-handed, then just swap it around, left and right. And then you play two bass drum shots afterwards. So right, left, foot, foot. At a slow speed, just on the snare drum, let's start there and see what it sounds like. So you'd have this right, left, foot, foot, right, left, foot, foot, right, left, foot, foot, right, left, foot, foot. That's kind of the idea. Now, what you should do at this point is either pause the video or make a note of what to practice, but you should definitely take time to practice just that part for quite a bit of time before you move to the next part of the lesson. And the reason for that is you want to get the coordination to be very, very nice and comfortable. The last thing you want is to try and speed up too soon, and then you find that the whole thing falls apart. Now, why does that happen? It's very simple. Your brain and your muscles have to learn how to play something, especially when it involves multiple limbs. And when you want to push the speed, it's got to be very comfortable. I've seen so many students over my years of teaching who play something like that, play at a slow speed like I did now, they get it right. Now they think they're John Bonham, they're the greatest thing ever. They try and speed up too soon and everything falls apart and they think that they're the worst drummer who ever lived. And they're not. The only reason that happened is because the coordination is not there. If you try and speed up too soon, your brain doesn't know what to do and it just goes, oh, I don't know what to play, just play all of it. And then it plays everything. So you end up with this. You just end up both hands and foot, everything lands together. And that's, that's just the brain going, I don't know what you want, so I'll just give you everything. You've got to practice getting to the point where the coordination can work at a high speed. And like most drummers, we all want to play fast, but you've got to work toward that. So keep it slow and build your speed in small increments. When you're feeling comfortable, look at the next part of this lesson. Okay, so once you're comfortable playing the snare and the foot together and you're happy with your speed and the coordination's working well, the next thing we can do is start looking at how to incorporate the other drums on your drum set. Now, the main goal here is for your own creativity to ignite. I'm going to give you a few examples, things that you can do that will work well and, and you can learn them and you can use them. They'll be great. But hopefully those examples will spark your own ideas you can try things on the drum set. Come up with fills that are uniquely you. That's what you ultimately want. You can use my examples, like I say, but see what you can come up with. Maybe you can come up with your own ones. Now, the, the first and most common one to use, especially when learning, is the same fill I played at the beginning of the video. And that's just to run through the four drums. So that'd be something like this. At a slow tempo, we would go like this. Right, left, foot. And what you should do is pick your speed that's comfortable for you, however fast or slow that may be, and just loop that full multiple times. A few minutes of it is great. It might sound like a lot, but you can play that a lot of times in a few minutes, and that's really going to help you get the pattern comfortable. If you make a mistake, just start again and just keep running until you've done enough of it. If I play it just a few times at a slightly higher speed just to get through it, it will sound something like this. And that's a really good way to practice both your coordination, but also learning to move around the drum set and keep it even. Once you start introducing the movement of the limbs, it does add a new factor. So it's good to practice that a few times and get nice and comfortable. Let's, let's try one more example. I'm going to split the hands up. So what I'm going to do now is for my first group, I'm going to play the snare and tom one. So I'm going to go and then foot, foot. And then for the second group, I'm going to play tom three and snare. And then foot, foot. So my fill would be something like this. And you can 
see when you start to speed it up, it really has the effect of sounding very fast, but not necessarily being that much hard work for your limbs once you practice it. Now, why is that? I'll keep this brief, but basically, when you start splitting the work amongst the limbs, every time one part of the drum set stops to let the other part play. So when my hands stop to let the foot play, or when the foot stops to let the hands play, that little bit of time, those few milliseconds is enough just to kind of reset the muscles and allows them to then restart with the same amount of power they originally played at, especially once you're comfortable and you've built up your strength. So this allows you to keep playing for a very long time at a high speed without really feeling too tired. It's a bit like a magician's trick. If, you, if you're if you a non-drummer and you hear that being played or see it being played, it sounds very complicated and sounds very impressive, especially when it's fast. But it's not that complicated in its theory. It's really just the practice that makes it effective and sound really, really sweet, really. So the practice, as I said earlier, is very important. And you don't want to shortchange yourself by trying to jump too quickly because too quick, too soon, because you're just going to end up making mistakes. So start it again at a speed that's comfortable for you and work your speed up slowly. And uh, when you're happy with, with those two examples, then try and come up with your own examples. Remember, your hands can go anywhere. So just off the top of my head, I can maybe go and then maybe, uh, for example, so. Or maybe you want to play something different. Maybe you want to go, maybe that. Anything is fine. Try some ideas and see what you can come up with. And, and uh, if you like the way it sounds, then keep it. If you don't like the way it sounds, get rid of it and try something else. And take the ones that you like and practice them until you know them nice and comfortably. And then we can go to the last part of this video, which is how to bring these fills into a drum groove, how to get the two to come together. Okay, so if you're comfortable playing this pattern at a, at a speed that you're happy with and you're able to move across the drum set a little bit, we can now look at the last part, which is how do you incorporate this fill into a drum beat? Now, in theory terms, this would be played at the same speed as most conventional drum rolls, which would be 16th notes. In non-theory non language, that's generally twice as fast as you normally play the Hyatt in most songs. So your Hyatt's normally playing something like this, one and two and three and four and I'll give you the bass drum and the snare for some context. One and two and three and four and most conventional drum rolls are twice as fast as that. So if your beat is one and two and three and four, then one and two and twice as fast. Now this fill would be the same speed. So I can replace what I just played there with the drum fill that you're learning today. So you get something like this. Okay, now, there's two important things to mention. The first is, you've got to see what feels comfortable for you to play. You might need to start slower at first if you're not very comfortable with the coordination yet. So if you need to play slow, that's fine. Play it slow. As you get more comfortable, you'll pick up your speed. Now, the second thing I want to mention is, at this point, you might run into a potential snag, which is after most drum fills, the, 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 the generally acceptable thing to do is to hit your crash with the foot afterwards. Sounds great. And then that, right? Now, the only potential problem here is that you end up with three feet in a row because you've got right, left, foot, foot, right, left, foot, 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 right? They all after each other. Now, if you're playing at a slower tempo, or if your muscular, muscle, muscle strength, finally got that out, your muscle strength is comfortable and nice and quick and, you know, or Hercules, then this might not be a problem for you. So then you can go, no problem. But the chances are at higher speed with a single pedal, you might run into some problems. If I try and play really quickly, I might not be able to get those three feet out. Yeah, you see, I missed the one in the middle. So. What I normally suggest to students at that point is to change the last group, the last right, left, foot, foot, change that to just four single strokes, right, left, right, left. And in the example we're currently playing, that would just be the floor tom. So I would go. And that allows me to keep the beat flowing. Remember, whatever you're playing, the fill is always secondary to the song that you're playing to. And if it's gonna serve the song, if you're gonna end up messing up because you try and play three feet, then don't play three feet. 
play four shots on the tom and play one foot if it's going to make your beat smoother. And of course, when you're comfortable with the practicing, or if you have a double pedal, then you can incorporate those foster feet when you want them. So just watch out for that. So that's pretty much how it would work. Now, I'm going to play a little bit on the drum set just to give you a feel for, or a feel for how it sounds when it's being used across the kit. I'm going to try and keep playing the same thing the whole time. I might not get it right because sometimes the music just takes me and I play all sorts of things, but I'll try and keep playing the same pattern. I'll start slow and build up the speed. And uh, really what you want to do is, is exactly that. Take the examples that you practice, whether they're the ones that I've given you or whether they're ones you've come up with. Start slow and play them in a beat. And then as you get more comfortable with them, you speed them up. There is a whole separate lesson that can be done for how to make this full work with the other things you already know but that we're not going to cover right now so let me play a little bit for you and show you how you could use this And that's, <clears throat> excuse me, you're a frog in the throat. That's kind of the idea. Just toward the end there, I deviated just a little bit, but most of the time I try to keep it that I was playing right there, foot, foot, with occasional four right hands or four hands together in order to play the foot with the crash at the end. So I hope that gives you some idea of what to play with this full. I hope you've learned something in this video. Uh, please feel free to leave any comments if there's anything, any feedback you'd like to give. And of course, if you're stuck with anything, I will do my best to help you. Um, if you did enjoy the video, please consider leaving a like and maybe subscribing um, if you are so inclined to do. Otherwise, I will hopefully see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.